lots of people have come and spoken to me, but you're the minister, you're the man in the know. Six months, nine months, 12 months, an extension to the November agreement. What do you think we will get at the end of these discussions? Is there a coalescing around nine months? I think, first of all, uh, today is a very important meeting of the committee. They will discuss all of the options, and all of the options you mentioned are, uh, are, the, uh, are going to be discussed, but with logic. Why six months? Why nine months? And why no more? And uh, the idea is for them to come up with a single recommendation if they, ca they can, or prioritize those options, bring them to the ministers tomorrow for a, for a discussion. Uh, and I think uh, whatever is the recommendation of the committee, uh, UAE has been always supporting the, uh, the organization, and I'm sure we will not find it difficult to align around uh, a recommendation by the committee. Do you think there's a majority uh, focused on nine months? Do you think that there is a majority of support for a nine-month extension? That's what, the mar that's what people are telling me here. I think it depends on the analysis of, uh, of each individual country of, and, and, and that option. But I think when you put all of the, uh, of, the, of the countries together and you look at the external forces as well in the market, six months or nine months or more uh, is, is going to come with justifications. I think uh, we need at least six months uh, for, uh, for the uh, in term of time for this deal to happen. We, there is significant inventories that we need to create a demand or a differential between the supply and demand to start reducing that inventories. Um, Mr. Khaled Al-Fali, your Saudi counterpart, said that he ha would do whatever it takes to move this market forward. What's the UAE position? Are you prepared to do whatever it takes over the next couple of days to get an agreement? I think we need to talk about the organization. It's not individual countries. I think whatever the organization uh, is seeing that this is the best for the market, you will find us all in the GCC at least supporting that, uh, that uh, decision. And we have been uh, there supporting the, the, uh, uh, the market stabilization from the beginning. So I don't see it a problem to do what it takes to, uh, to create the market stability. I want to take you forward. Let's say we get an agreement. We go forward to perhaps March of next year, 2018. The Federal Reserve had to give us an exit strategy. The markets are demanding the ECB give us an exit strategy. For OPEC, when this agreement, if we extend to March of next year, Your Excellency, what happens then? Is it open the gates? What happens? What could be the extension, strat what could be the exit strategy at the end of this in March of next year? I'll give you a bit of analysis on, first of all, are we going to discuss an exit strategy in this meeting? I doubt it. It's, it's premature. I think we need to give the market a little bit more time. Second, there are fundamentals in the market. Like if you don't spend more or put more investments, you will not be able to sustain your production. So naturally, your production is going to decline by the natural reservoir declines. And only few countries that I can name or list who have that capabilities of injecting more capital investments to increase the, the, uh, the production to be ready in a year time or six months time or nine months time to come and say, I can increase the production back to that level or, or, or the level of October 2016. And you're one of those swing producers? I think that's what we are trying to do in United Arab Emirates. We are increasing our uh, output uh, capacity, which is not the production, to uh, 3.5 uh, million barrels to allow us to intervene when needed to create that market stability. I think uh, that question can be deferred to the next meeting. It's logical to ask it then. Can I ask you then, in terms of production and the five-year average, that's what Mr. Bakindo told me in London. That's what I'm hearing here. Will we hit the five-year average at the end of the year? I just caught up with the Venezuelan minister. He said it is achievable by the end of this year. Would you agree? I think it's difficult to just say yes because there are different fundamentals in the market that we need to look in answering that question. The shale oil response, 
the level of inventories, uh, whether it's uh, products or or crude, and uh, the additional the, the geo geopolitics and some of the issues in the Middle East that we we need to to look 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 at. Uh, so it's it's difficult to say, but I can tell you that the market recovery is going to be significantly much improved than it is today uh, at the end of the year. I can tell you that we will drain more from the, the, the inventories, and I can tell you that uh, we will contribute more to that differential between the supply and demand. So the UAE will do, will do more? The UAE will cut more? No, I didn't. Oh, sorry, OPEC. OPEC the, the overall consensus is, is to move forward with cuts. No, the, 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 the consensus is you, you wait until tomorrow to see the consensus. But I think the logic today is the majority are talking about supporting. The, I haven't seen a single country not stating that they are supportive of the extension. Whether the extension six months or nine months, I think that's what we, are, we will hear tomorrow. Let's play the classic game. We'll dance. I'm going to ask you, we get an agreement tomorrow. What does that do for the price of oil, Minister? I don't want a price from you. I want a bandwidth from you. Do we safely go, do we put a floor in of 50 bucks if there's a nine-month extension? Where can an extension take the market to? I don't think the intention is to drive prices up. The intention from the beginning, and I've been saying this, and we truly mean this, the intention is to bring investments to the market. The intention is to create jobs. The intention is to help the international economy uh, see a reliable uh, and unpredictable price uh, level that is fair to the producers and to the investors. Today, it's not fair to the investors. The reason we don't see the investment companies and the IOCs putting or sanctioning significant projects. We need to see them doing that. Once they do that, whatever the price is, and if they are happy with it, then I think that's the price that we will target. Final question. It never ceases to amaze uh, what the shale producers in the United States can do. Lord Brown, the former CEO of BP, caught up with me last week. He said, Manus, the shale producers are just getting started in terms of the more efficiency they can deliver. Does that concern you within the UAE? Are you surprised by how aggressive shale in the United States is? No, I'm not, I'm not surprised. The, uh, we all know that shale uh, production is easier because of the infrastructure and the nature of that play. But we all know that the concentration and drilling in the shale oil has been in the sweet spot, sweet spot for the past two years. So it has been resilient because of that. There is a limit to how much sweet spot we will have. And I think for us, we, uh, shale oil, first of all, is needed. Sh we are not against shale oil. If it wasn't for shale oil, we will have uh, bigger problems today. So I think it's, it's now not considered even unconventional. We consider it conventional. I think we need to see a balance on how much supply we get to balance with the demand of the, of the world. And I think, I think we, will, we will see uh, some limitations uh, ultimately from the, from the shale oil production.